Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. You ready to make some magic? Today I'm going to be drawing Luna Lovegood in my style from the Harry Potter series. So let's get painting. So today I'm going to be drawing some commissions I recently got in. The commissions are for St. Jude Walk Run on September 21st in Austin, Texas at the Del Nightman. If you are in Austin, I would highly encourage you to go. It is super inspiring and you get to help save children's lives. St. Jude is 100% free for the children who are getting the treatments and for the family to stay with them while going through that terrible cancer. Uh, it is also a research hospital, so whatever they learn about cancer, they share with other hospitals around the world because no child needs to go through that. So for every $10 or more donate donations I receive right now until the 21st, I will watercolor their favorite Harry Potter character in my style. Yay! Today's commission is for my dad, who donated $50 to St. Jude. His favorite character is Luna Lovegood. Of course, she's amazing. Which is also my fiance's favorite character. So I will actually be drawing two versions of Luna Lovegood and pretty much have them battle it out and see which one they like the most. So the one that I'm drawing right now is just her typical look. Um, very cute, very chibi style. She has her uh, glasses on that I absolutely love. There is a Funko Pop version of her with those glasses and they are super adorable. Um, one thing that I love about this character or this uh, her style on that she has is her radish earrings. I always thought that they were strawberries but apparently they are radishes so now you know. If you have a favorite Harry Potter character that you would like me to draw for you, all you have to do is donate $10 or more to the Austin St. Jude Walk Run under the team DXL Defenders. D as in dog, X as in x-ray, and L as in lion. I will put a link in the description. My friends and I are having a little competition amongst us and uh, all of us are actually different houses. So I am House Ravenclaw, the smartest, the wisest of Hogwarts. We stay out of trouble, unlike those Gryffindors, and we try to focus on our studies. We also have to Google literally everything. My best friend is a Hufflepuff, very emotional, loves to snack, and likes collecting boxes for some reason. I don't know. Our Slytherin is very cunning and maniacal. And my friend the Gryffindor is very proud and one of the most devoted people to St. Jude. So let me know which house you're in. It's great to find out everyone's houses. And uh, if you know your American one as well, that would be awesome too. So while researching Luna's look, I absolutely fell in love with her wand. It's very simple, kind of a greenish color, and it's small and straight. It's super cute. I wanted to add her Patronus as well, which most of my characters for this event will have their Patronus. If I know what it is anyways. I think it's pretty fitting. Luna's Patronus is the hair. It's a cute little bunny rabbit. I wanted to make him extra adorable, just like I did with her. I also wanted to add the Quivers, which is the magazine that she made herself, I believe. I wanted to add some simple characteristics that match with the person. So for Sirius Black, I would probably add his dog form somehow, and if I had to do Harry's father, which I cannot remember his name right now, hmm. James, James, that's it, I would probably do the stag. Also, I realized that I said quiver instead of quivler. Those are two completely different things. My bad. Also, for whatever reason, I could not get the rabbit's back leg right. I apparently just don't know how to draw back legs for rabbits, which you would assume they're the same as like centaurs or whatever, and I just couldn't do it. Alrighty, now that I'm finishing up with the final touches of the pin, I will start to watercolor it. These are the watercolors that I'm using right now. Um, pretty simple, they're just like the Walmart uh, supermarket brand. I'm not even sure what brand they are because I completely lost the lid. Uh, yeah. 
and I just have kind of the little palette on my left side just to see what the colors are actually going to look like before I put it down on paper. It's definitely a good thing to do if you're watercoloring just so you're not putting too much color on or too little color on and knowing exactly what color you're going to use. So her skin tone, I actually have a color in there that is pretty perfect for her skin color. It's just the plain old peachy and then I start adding a little bit of the red. Um, you can see that I'm mixing it in there right now to get a little bit darker skin color. That's what I'm going to use the shade and I'm going to use it to put a little bit of blush on her cheeks as well. So while shading this in, I didn't really have a plan on where the light was coming from, which as an artist, that's a terrible mistake. You should always remember where you have the light coming from because shade comes from all different directions. So eventually I think I focused more on the light coming from the right side. So that means the left side is going to be mostly shaded. I messed up on her blush a little bit. I actually made them way too red. So I think I might have cut out the part where I dab it away, but she I have yeah oh there it is yeah I have to dab to take out some of that color um it kind of makes the paper a little bit funky as you can tell I was patting it down to see if uh it was still too wet but it turned out all right I mixed in the color a little bit more I add a little bit more water to the skin color and kind of blend it all in so now I'm going to work on her hair. I just put a plain yellow base down. I know she doesn't actually have like yellow hair, but it is pretty blonde. And since it's my cartoon, I'm going to make it super yellow. This is just the base color. What I do for the shading is I put down that yellow color again, but I also add a little bit of the darker yellow, the little mustard. And if that's not dark enough for me, then I'll add a little bit of brown to it just to help with the shading. Another thing that I really like about Luna Lovegood, I guess the actor more so, she got the part because she was at a book signing where JK Rowling was, the author of Harry Potter series. And JK Rowling actually wanted to have her as Luna Lovegood, but Luna at the time, the actress, was going through um, some eating disorders and she was very, very anorexic. So JK Rowling said, I will give you this part, but you have to do a huge favor for me. You have to, you know, you have to gain weight. You have to be healthy. I need you to be healthy and then you can have Luna's part. So Luna Lovegood, the actress, I don't know her name, unfortunately, actually did um, you know, gain weight and was a healthy weight for the movies. So I thought that was pretty awesome of JK Rowling. It kind of saved her life and gave her a role, gave her, gave her a whole new life, a happy life. Another great thing about Luna that I absolutely love is her outfits. They are fantastic. They're crazy. They're kooky, just like she is. Uh, not just her glasses or her radish earrings, but I actually really like this coat. It's pretty simple, but it gives character for sure. And purple is actually one of my favorite colors. I didn't go too crazy into detail with the coat, just because none of the rest of the drawing is super crazy detailed. It's, it's a cartoon, you know. The pattern on it is going to be different than the original, of course. Um, I didn't have a thin enough paintbrush at the time or in my reach to actually make it really detailed either. So that's the base color of the purple and then I will put down a uh, darker purple over top. Uh, if I did do it a little bit more detailed, I would have done a tan base first and then make dark purple and that light purple lines for it. So the Quivlers, I think are originally a uh, green or a tan color. I decided to make them blue just because it contrast really well against the yellow hair and the purple jacket. I think it, make it makes it just stand out a little bit more. Um, I put a little star in the middle of the quivler. I think originally it has a um, elf dude, I guess you can call it. 
a little munchkin troll, whatever is on the Quibbler. But I just decided to do this instead. I also got really nervous when I was coloring in this mouth because I didn't want it to hit the teeth. I always mess up the teeth, always. Always make them a different color and it bothers me so much. I just want them to have awesome white teeth. Let's show those pearls. But I didn't mess up surprisingly and it came out pretty good. For the glasses, I absolutely love the color on here, so I wish I could have detailed the glasses a little bit more, maybe a little bit of shine on the lenses. I just wasn't thinking about it at the time, so for the lenses, I just make a blue, and I should have done a white line in them to make it look reflective, but it's still pretty awesome. The colors are good. And I'm going to go over the glasses a couple times more just to get that really nice deep purple into it. It's kind of a magenta color. Alright, so now that the glasses are the color that I want it, I am going to start on the tongue. The tongue, I dab into my little palette there just to make sure I have the right red. I think it's still a little bit too bright for my taste, honestly. I don't remember if I darken it or not, but it works for now. It's a cartoon, like I said, so it's gonna have to work. I do color in the Quiveler front cover with just a little bit of tan, and then later on I write like little red scribbles in it. I don't know if it was going for actual words or images on the Quiveler, but whatever it is, it works. The eyes are some of my favorite things to draw, honestly. I I always start with the eyes. I know every art teacher is like, oh, don't, don't go with the eyes. Uh, you have to make the whole image first, the whole body, shape out the head, shape out where your body wants to be, which I do. I still will draw the head, draw the little center line in it, and uh, try to map out the body, but I will still always go with the eyes. Eyes are the gateway into someone's soul. So there's those glasses, like I said, did not put a white line in them, wish I would've. Eh, it's fine. And then my radishes, those are my favorite parts. I love those earrings so much. I bet we could probably buy them online too, like at Etsy or something. I'm gonna have to look that up now. They're super adorable and I wish that my ears were pierced again so I can wear them. Maybe I'll get a necklace or something with them on. Not sure, they're still pretty cute. Like I was saying about the wand before as well, it was that kind of teal green color from what I looked it up, and I, I just love that wand. So th right now, it looks like I'm shading. Uh, like I said, I took a little bit darker yellow into it, took some of that uh, mustard yellow color, and just started shadowing the left side. Like I said, that's where the sunlight is coming from the right side, so I shade the left side. and. I draw some lines through there so it makes it look more flowy and not uh, flat hair, basically. Not like a fake plastic tube of hair on her head. I don't even know anymore. It just, it just makes it work. Put some little curls at the end and it all works out. So it also, the mustard yellow wasn't dark enough for me, so I did use some of that uh, light brown to shade a little bit darker as well. So now I'm going to start on the Patronus. Uh, Patronus is typically just like a really light blue or a white. I made hers a little bit different, so I start with the base uh, coloring through the little line, the uh, pencil lines that I have down there and make a pretty light base at first and then I will go back over it with a darker color and then I put some like stars throughout it because she's Luna. It sounds cute and Patronus is pretty mystical and magical so I like them. They're pretty cool. Uh, by the way, what is your Patronus? I think mine turned out to be a it was either a cat, like a tabby cat, or a dog. I honestly do not remember. It was either like a Labrador dog or a tabby cat. Um, I might have taken it twice. I just don't remember what it was. <laughs> I'll have to figure it out for you and maybe post it some other time. Maybe the next video I'll, I'll let you know what it was. So this part right here was pretty interesting. Um, my last picture that I did was 
purple on the background. I think it was my uh, David Bowie one, my Labyrinth one, which I have posted, uh, going to have posted on my Instagram if I don't already. Uh, so I accidentally got it on this page and I wanted to use it anyways. And it worked out because those colors match her jacket. So I just put little lines in the background to pretty much match that. And this part is where I am starting to darken the inside of the Patronus. Um, just making it a little bit wavy, a little bit crazy. I don't really care where the lines go. It, it honestly kind of looks like water. Just darkening the inside, not so much the outside, because I want it to look still like a swirl. I want to give it a little bit definition. I did color the white rabbit a little bit, but I still want it to stand out, and I still want it to be like a white rabbit. I should have probably colored its nose maybe pink, which would make it really cute. Or maybe give it like little pink cheeks. Oh, that would have been adorable. Oh well. It's still, it's still pretty cute. So this part with the jacket was very difficult. Um, I don't like the brush that I used and I honestly wish I would have gone with a pen instead. I, and I do have a purple sharpie pen. I just didn't use it because I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I was too caught up watching Dracula, I believe, while drawing. So I just wanted to get it done. It Overall, it did turn out all right, but it could have been better. I think if I have any regrets on this drawing, it was definitely the bunny's legs. <laughs> I definitely should have redone those. And the jackets definitely the jacket um it's very difficult to keep consistent lines with watercolor i've noticed watercolor tends to blend things out and make them fluid you can't really get perfect lines with watercolor so i'm learning i'm definitely learning with watercolors uh my best friend my hufflepuff actually got me some watercolor paints to use so possibly the next video i will try those watercolor paints out. I've never used the paint before. I've only used these little tablets that I have here. So we will try that and see how it goes. If y'all have any recommendations on how to use the watercolor paints, that would be awesome because honestly, I don't even know where to start. I don't know. Do you add water to it? To it? Do you just leave it? Who knows? So after I finish the jacket, detailing the jacket, I start detailing the little things. I take my small paintbrush that I've been using for the jacket lines and I draw those little red marks. I I don't even know. It looks like words. Uh, I'm going to have to take a closer look and figure out what I was trying to write. Maybe like Nargle or something. I don't know. Uh, so this part, <laughs> I start just starring the Patronus, making little speckles that kind of look like stars to me. Um, the, it was pretty fun because I love that dark blue. It's really, it makes the Patronus pop a little bit more. And like I said, it's, it's very Luna to have little stars everywhere. I do erase some of the pencil lines. Honestly, usually I leave the pencil lines because after you watercolor them, they are pretty permanent unless you want to ruin your watercolor then go for it go try undoing all that so now it's time for pinning this is the most relaxing thing to me it's most nerve-wracking and the most relaxing thing to me i love pinning because i love seeing my watercolors pop after they're done being pinned but if you mess up one line it just ruins the entire picture for me. I I can't stand it when I mess up the line. I've gotten to a point where if I do mess up a line, it is pretty easy for me to fix, but it's still, it's still bothersome. Like I said, I always start with the eyes, of course. Those are my favorite thing to draw. Her little eyelashes are so cute. And then finishing out those radish earrings, of course. If I had to pick a favorite Harry Potter character, Luna is definitely up there. I I love her. I love her personality. Um, she grew up with hard times. Like, her mother, she saw her mother die. Her, It's just been her and her dad, and everyone thinks that they're crazy. So, 
she doesn't have any friends. Uh, I think she's also a Ravenclaw. Um, she just likes hanging out with the Gryffindors. She's out of place. Everyone thinks that she's just too crazy. She's very smart. That's why she's a Ravenclaw. But they, she's the kind of crazy smart. So no one really accepts her. And it's kind of sad, honestly. They all hide her shoes. They don't believe in the Nargles. They hide like all of her clothes. It's just terrible. They treat her so badly. I haven't reread the books in a while. I think I'm rereading them to... Where am I? I think I already read The Goblet of Fire, so I'm on to the next book after that, reading it anyways. I read them when I was very young, when they first came out, after that, so yeah, I forgot all about it. Watched the movies several, several times. I love the movies, and I really love the books too, honestly. It just puts you in a whole different world. So let me know, do you prefer the movies or do you prefer the books? I think the majority of the answers is going to be the books, because books are just super detailed. But honestly, the movies are not too bad. They actually did a pretty good job. I think they overplayed the Gryffindors a little bit too much. No hate on the Gryffindors. Sorry, if you are one. But they're not my favorite. I think Ravenclaws and Hufflepuffs are definitely underplayed. So I'm almost done pinning Luna. I actually forget a lot of lines, like her glasses. I completely forget to pin those. After I got done recording, I had to go back in and actually pin them again. So you won't see them being pinned in the video, but I do go back in and pin them. And then I didn't add too much lines on the rabbit which now thinking about it i probably should have done like maybe some hair texture um i just wanted to make it look as patronacy if that's definitely not a word but i'm gonna go with it patronacy as possible uh there's a little bit of tough under the belly and the tail is definitely fluffy so i should have again colored maybe the cheek the nose or the little pads on his feet just to make him a little bit more cuter but Overall, I am pretty happy with the rabbit. I switch markers, or the the pens, just to have a, a thicker line on the Patronas, which I should have done to outline Luna anyways. I most likely will, for my future drawings, go back over the outline of the character with a thicker pen. Um, like I said, I just grabbed whatever I had there, and you can see with the drawing, I didn't pin all the Patronus. So there it is. That's what we have. I really hope you enjoyed it. It was definitely fun to draw and let me know what you want me to draw. Thanks. And that's all I have for you today. I really hope that you enjoyed it. It was super fun to watercolor. I love Luna. I love good. That was really difficult to say. Hmm. Anyways, if you know what your Patronus is or your Hogwarts house, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below. I would love to find out how many Ravenclaws are out there. And my Hufflepuffs, of course. And I guess Slytherins and Gryffindors are included as well. <laughs> I love them all. If this video inspired you, make sure to hit the like button down below. And also, if you want to see more of these type of videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel as well. It's Foxy's Comics. You can also follow me on Instagram, same handle. And I do have a Facebook page as well. I will say that I post more on Instagram. I also post my own comics that I'm making. And I will post the final product of the watercolor on there as well. So... All I have to say to you now is I hope that you have a magical day. <laughs> Thank you.